What is confession? Confession or penance is the sacrament in which the sins committed after baptism are absolved. Confession is the telling of our sins to a duly authorized priest for the purpose of obtaining forgiveness. But why do we confess our sins? In order to understand why we confess our sins, we first have to understand what sin is and Christ's mission. Sin is an offense in thought, word, or deed, or a mission against God. Because man has sinned, he owes an infinite debt to God and was cut off from communion to him, making him a child of wrath, destined to hell. We see this in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, which says, quote, For the wages of sin is death. End quote. Christ came to die and pay off that infinite debt of our sins and to grant us forgiveness that we can avoid hell and have sanctifying grace, which makes us partakers of the divine nature, which opens us up to the eternal happiness of the Trinity in heaven. To be forgiven of our sins, we must first believe in Jesus Christ and God, as John chapter 3, verse 16 says, quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. End quote. Additionally, to be saved, one must receive water baptism as seen in John chapter 3, verse 5, which says, quote, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. End quote. Once you receive water baptism, you are made a new creation. All of your sins are forgiven, and you are filled with sanctifying grace. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, which says, quote, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation, end quote. However, we know that baptism is a sacrament that can only be administered once. So what happens if you sin after baptism? Well, according to St. John, there are two types of actual sins that you can commit, mortal and venial. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17 says, quote, All wrongdoing is sin, but there are sins which are not mortal. End quote. So there are two types of actual sins. Venial sins, which are lighter offenses to God, which hurt your relationship with Him, and then there are mortal sins, which kill your relationship with God and make you lose all sanctifying grace and brings you into a state where you are on the road to damnation. We see St. Paul teaches that you can commit mortal sins after baptism, which will send you to hell. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19-21 through 21 says, quote, Now the works of the flesh are plain, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. End quote. Additionally, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-10 through 10 says, quote, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. End quote. Thus, there are sins that you can commit after baptism or after being justified that will separate you from heaven and lead you to hell. These sins are called mortal sins. So then how are these forgiven if you can't be baptized again? This is where we get the sacrament of confession. Christ in John chapter 20 verses 21 through 23 institutes the sacrament of confession. We see the following is said, quote, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. End quote. Thus, the apostles have received power to forgive sins and retain sins. This means that the apostles can forgive your sins or retain your sins in the name of Christ in the sacrament of confession. Now, obviously, people after the time of the apostles were going to commit sins after baptism. And therefore, this power to forgive sins through confession was passed down to the validly ordained successors of the apostles through the laying on of hands. Thus, if you want to be saved and if you have committed any mortal sins after being baptized, you must confess all your mortal sins to a validly ordained Catholic priest to receive absolution, to be forgiven and reconciled with God. Now let's move on to how we can confess our sins. Before we confess our sins, let's distinguish between mortal and venial sins. Mortal sin is a grievous offense against the law of God. This sin is called mortal 
because it deprives us of spiritual life, which is sanctifying grace, and brings everlasting death and damnation on the soul. Venial sin is a lighter offense against the law of God. Venial sins hurts your relationship with God, but does not absolutely kill it like mortal sin does. How do we know if something is a mortal sin? There are three criteria that must be met to make a sin a mortal sin. One, it must be of grievous matter. Two, it has to have sufficient reflection. And three, you must have full consent of the will. To make a sin mortal, three things are necessary. Grievous matter, sufficient reflection, and full consent of the will. What do we mean by grievous matter with regard to sin? By grievous matter with regard to sin, we mean that the thought, word, or deed by which mortal sin is committed must be either very bad in itself or severely prohibited, and therefore sufficient to make a mortal sin if we deliberately yield to it. What does sufficient reflection and full consent of the will mean? Sufficient reflection means that we must know the thought, word, or deed to be sinful at the time we are guilty of it, and full consent of the will means that we must fully and willfully yield to it. To see if a sin is grave matter, it is good to consult the Ten Commandments, the sayings and exhortations of Christ and the Apostles in the New Testament, the Catechism, and to review the teachings of the Church Fathers and theologians. Finally, if one needs further clarification if a sin is mortal, he should ask a trustworthy traditional priest whether the sin is mortal or not. We shall cover a brief examination of conscience that highlights common mortal sins. Attached in the description is the following examination of conscience. For the first commandment, have you had strange gods before the Lord? Have you worshipped false gods like Buddha? Have you done superstitious practices like fortune telling, Ouija boards, horoscopes? Have you not spent time in prayer and loved God with your whole heart? For the second commandment, have you taken God's name in vain? Have you blasphemed God or the saints or had anger against God? For the third commandment, have you done needless work on Sunday? Or have you skipped a Sunday mask or holy day of obligation like the Assumption of Mary on August 15th? Have you failed to honor your parents as the fourth commandment requires you? Have you broken the fifth commandment by killing someone by murder, euthanasia, abortion, or having even supported any of these actions? Then you are in mortal sin. Have you harbored resentment in your heart? Have you gotten drunk or smoked marijuana or any psychedelic drugs? Have you committed the grave sin of scandal? For the sixth and ninth commandments, have you cheated on your spouse or actively desired someone else's wife? Have you used artificial contraception? Have you had oral, anal sex, or foreplay? Have you masturbated? Have you committed the marital act outside of the vagina? Are you guilty of homosexual acts in thoughts, words, or deed? Have you committed fornication or any sexual activity outside of marriage in thought, word, or deed? Have you intentionally aroused your sexual passions outside of marriage in thought, word, or deed? Have you made out or sexually touched someone before marriage or consented to the desire? You heard me right. Passionate kissing before marriage is a grave sin according to the magisterium of Pope Alexander VII. If you've committed these actions, then you've committed a grave sin and need confession. According to Our Lady of Fatima, countless souls get thrown into hell for sins against the sixth and ninth commandments. Have I broken the seventh and tenth commandment by stealing or desiring and envying my neighbor's possessions? Have I paid back for the things I have stolen or make some form of restitution to the extent possible? Have I gravely omitted to share with the poor and to tithe to the church? Have I broken the eighth commandment by telling a lie, gossiping, hurting someone's reputation without grave reason? Have I broken the rules of the church, including not going to confession for a year or having not received the Eucharist during the Easter season once a year in a state of grace, or not marrying within the church? or breaking the fasting rules for Lent, or have I broke the one hour fast for the Holy Eucharist? If you have committed any of these previous sins mentioned, or anything that's gravely wrong that's in your conscience, you must go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation to get your sins forgiven. If you die in unrepentant mortal sin, you immediately go to hell. Thus, you should prioritize confession before anything. Additionally, you cannot receive the Eucharist if you have any mortal sins that have not yet been forgiven. When you go to confession, you must state every mortal sin you committed, including their species, also known as the division or class to which the sins belong, their number, approximately how many times you did it, and any circumstances that change their nature, anything that makes it another kind of sin. Thus, to steal is a sin, but to steal from the church makes our theft sacrilegious. Again, impure actions are sins, but a person must say whether they are committed alone or with others, with relatives or strangers, with persons married or single, because these circumstances change them from one kind of impurity to another. So you have to confess the species or the type of sin, the number of times you committed it, and any circumstances that change your nature. An example of a valid confession would be like saying, I committed masturbation to gay pornography two times. Or another example would be, I skipped Sunday Mass ten times. Another example would be, I stole $20 from a homeless man three times. It is not necessary to confess venial sins. However, it is highly recommended because it will grant us special graces to overcome the sin and grow in humility. Notice, if you willingly and knowingly refuse to confess a mortal sin in the sacrament of confession, 
then none of your sins that you confess are forgiven, and you come out with an extra mortal sin, the sin of a sacrilegious confession. Thus, you should never withhold a mortal sin in confession. Additionally, we have the seal of confession. Catechism paragraph 1467 says, Given the delicacy and greatness of this ministry and respect due to persons, the church declares that every priest who hears confessions is bound under very severe penalties to keep absolute secrecy regarding the sins that his penitents have confessed to him. He can make no use of knowledge that confession gives him about penitents' lives. This secret, which admits of no exceptions, is called the sacramental seal, because what the penitent has made known to the priest remains sealed by the sacrament. Thus, we should not be afraid to go to confession or be overwhelmed by embarrassment. God wants to forgive us through the priest, and the priest would rather hear the worst of sins than have you withhold it. Additionally, if anyone overhears your confession in the confession line, they are bound to uphold secrecy of your sins. This is seen in Code of Canon Law, Canon 983, Section 2, which says, The interpreter, if there is one, and all others who in any way have knowledge of sins from confession are also obliged to observe secrecy. Therefore, you should not be scared to confess your mortal sins. If you so happen to forget to confess a mortal sin out of ignorance, your confession is still valid and you are forgiven. However, the next time you go to confession, you must bring up the mortal sin you forgot to confess. We are bound to receive sacramental absolution for every post-baptismal mortal sin we have confessed. Code of Canon Law, Canon 988, Section 1 says, A member of the Christian faithful is obliged to confess in kind and number all grave sins committed after baptism and not yet remitted directly through the keys of the church, nor acknowledge an individual confession of which the person has knowledge after diligent examination of conscience. Now that you want to go to confession, where do you go? You must go to a validly ordained Catholic priest who is in communion with the Pope to have illicit confession. If you look up Catholic churches near your location online, you can find a list of Catholic churches nearby. On their websites, they will have a section on the sacraments and a schedule of when they are offering confession. If you can't find that on their website, consider checking the church's weekly bulletin, which is advertised on their website, usually. And usually in the first few pages, they have a mass and confession schedule. If you were to have a heart attack today, you would immediately go to the hospital to be healed because you don't want to physically die. If you are in mortal sin, you are on the verge of eternal damnation. How much more must you prioritize receiving spiritual healing over physical healing? Thus, you should never spend an entire day in mortal sin. Go to confession as soon as possible. If confession is not offered soon, consider emailing or calling a priest to schedule an individual confession. Additionally, if you are going to make your first confession in years, I would recommend scheduling a private confession with the priest so that you don't take up the entire confession period and make others wait 40 minutes. You should also write down all of your mortal sins on a piece of paper so that you do not forget. You do not have to confess sins prior to baptism. However, you're allowed to. Now, if you're not a Catholic, or if you want to be forgiven of your sins, you can make an act of perfect contrition. Perfect contrition is that which fills us up with sorrow and hatred for sin, because it offends God who is infinitely good in himself and worthy of all love. Perfect contrition will obtain pardon for mortal sin without the sacrament of penance when we cannot go to confession. Emphasis on that last part. But with the perfect contrition, we must have the intention of going to confession as soon as possible, if we again have the opportunity. So, if you're in a mortal sin right now, Get on your knees and pray this along with me. Our Lady of Sorrows, please obtain for me the grace of perfect contrition. Then pray the following prayer. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. Once you have gone to confession, it is good to set up a healthy confession schedule, a spiritual regimen. First off, you should pray at least 15 minutes every day. A good way to start doing this is to pray the rosary every day. If you can't do this just yet, start with something more manageable. For example, half a rosary or maybe one decade. Secondly, you should read the Bible often, maybe half a chapter of the Gospels every day or every other day. Thirdly, you should go to confession at least once a month if not more frequently, or whenever you fall into mortal sin, that is. Additionally, you should do five minutes of spiritual reading every day. Find a book written by a saint, such as The Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales, and slowly read it and apply it to your life. Finally, you should focus on practicing one beatitude or virtue a month. 
If you are consistent with this, you will spiritually grow and have a strong relationship with Christ. Now, let us see what Jesus says about confession, the Lord God himself. In the book, Divine Mercy in My Soul, Jesus said to St. Faustina, quote, Daughter, when you go to confession, to this fountain of thy mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul and ennobles it. Every time you go to confession, immerse yourself entirely in my mercy with great trust so that I may pour my bounty of grace upon your soul. When you approach the confessional, know this, that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act on your soul. Hear the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope that you go to the sacrament of confession soon. It will save your soul. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and like the video. Thank you Christian for helping in this video. Pray the rosary today.